Hello, everyone. And yes, now we are going to talk about how we can consume uh, Microsoft Graph APIs within uh, uh, Microsoft Viva Connections Adaptive Card Extensions. So, a uh, few words before digging into the demo. And uh, uh, I simply want to remind you that whenever we create uh, an adaptive card extension with SharePoint Framework uh, under the cover, we have uh, SharePoint Framework, the whole SharePoint Framework uh, infrastructure. So as like as we can uh, easily consume Microsoft Graph uh, in any kind of uh, uh, client-side web part that we create with SPFX, uh, we can do uh, the same in an adaptive card extension. So. We can simply rely on the MS Graph client uh, uh, type. We uh, need to define in uh, the package solution JSON file of our solution the uh, Web API permission request that we want to have satisfied from a requirement permission requirement point of view. We need to grant those permissions to the uh, solution that we created with SPFX for the adaptive card extension that we created with SPFX. And then in our uh, code base, we can just rely on the MS Graph client object in order to make queries against Microsoft Graph to retrieve items or eventually interact with the, uh, the uh, Microsoft 365 workloads through the Microsoft Graph in order to create new uh, instances of uh, uh, events in a calendar or sending email messages or stuff like that. So this is what we are going to see uh, from a very basic point of view, just to understand how we can do that uh, in an adaptive card extension. So let me switch to the uh, demo. And uh, first of all, this is the very first one I will show you. This is a very basic sample in which I want to focus on how we can consume graph rather than how we can create a really cool UI, because this is just a, a demo focus on uh, consuming a graph in ACES. So this is a sample in which we can see a list of events in the calendar of the current connected user. How can we do that uh, using uh, adaptive card extensions? So here we have uh, a solution that I created with the human generator for SharePoint framework, and I uh, simply scaffolded uh, an adaptive card uh, extension uh, object or component. Here, first of all, in the uh, on init method of my component, uh, aside from registering the card, the uh, card and quick views that I have in my uh, component, in my ACE, I just create, uh, as I was telling you through the context of SharePoint Framework, a new instance of the Microsoft Graph client using the MS Graph client factory property of the context of SPFX and using the get client method. This asynchronous method will give me back an MS Graph client object that I can use to uh, consume Microsoft Graph. Now, for the sake of having uh, a, a clean design of the solution, I'm relying on a calendar service uh, um, type that I defined in a dedicated uh, uh, TypeScript file here. And here we have an interface declaring what the uh, calendar service will provide. So an init method uh, getting the graph client, MS Graph Client instance as the input argument, and a get top calendar items method, which will return an array of event types, where every single event is simply defined as a set of properties like the subject, the start and then the date and time of the event, which is a complex type defined right here, if the event is an online meeting or not, and the web link to the event. So uh, whenever I want to use this calendar service, I first of all initialize the object. And uh, as you can see here in the calendar service, I make it available uh, globally uh, so that I can simply rely on the instance that I have. And using the set timeout uh, uh, method, I simply uh, load the top calendar items uh, in a uh, dedicated uh, uh, request rather than uh, uh, doing the actual request within the on init method just to speed up the uh, load of the adaptive card extension. So in the get top calendar items uh, method, I get back my array of events and I can simply uh, set them inside the state uh, of my component. Now the uh, get top calendar items simply relies on the graph client and using the me slash events endpoint of Microsoft Graph version one retrieves the properties that I'm interested in making a get request. So really simple from a code base point of view. 
Once uh, I have defined the graph client uh, uh, code, I need to also declare in my solution, in the package solution JSON file, that I need the permission to consume the calendar. And in order to know what permission I need, I can simply rely on the documentation of Microsoft Graph. So here, for example, you can see the page about how to get the list of events inside the uh, docs of Microsoft Graph. And here we can clearly see that with a delegated uh, approach, so uh, with the identity of the currently connected user, in order to get access to the list of events in uh, her or his calendar, we need to have the calendars.read or eventually the calendars.readwrite. But clearly, if we simply want to read the events, we, we, uh, we will uh, just need the calendars.read uh, permission. And that's why in the package uh, solution.json file, I'm declaring that from a Web API permission request point of view, I need for the resource Microsoft Graph the calendars.read permission. So that when I will be ready with my solution fully implemented, I will be able to uh, deploy my solution in the app catalog. And from an admin point of view, I will be able to grant this permission request to my uh, solution and being able to uh, consume the Microsoft Graph. So now that we have uh, seen how we can retrieve the list of events and how we store the events in the state uh, object of my uh, adaptive card extension, we can see that, well, from the card view point of view, the card view is really trivial and it simply relies on a button to show the actual quick view. In the quick view, on the contrary, in the data uh, method, we uh, return a complex type which will be made of a title and of the array of the events that we have in the state of our adaptive card extension component. As such, in the JSON uh, definition of our uh, ACE, we can declare, we can define the uh, UI of the uh, quick view, including the data binding uh, on the events that I have uh, in my events array. And that's why here, aside from providing a title in a text block inside the uh, uh, adaptive card uh, syntax, we also have the header, so the start and the time and the subject of every single event in my calendar, as well as uh, we use the data binding functionalities that for the sake of completeness we covered in one of the previous uh, SIG calls a few weeks ago. But here we say that the data binding for a container that we have right here is targeting the events property of the object that I'm providing right here in the data method. As such, again, we can go through all of the events in this array, and for each and every single event, we will render a text block for the start date time. We will do the same for the end date time, and as you can see, we can format the date and time, and then we can render the subject of the event. And that's really simple and easy to do, and you can, uh, by doing that, easily do the binding against an array of objects that you've retrieved through Microsoft Graph. Now, in order to be able to deploy this solution, as I was telling you before, you can create a package, so an SPPKG file that we already have right here in the SharePoint slash solution folder of my solution, and then you can uh, upload the package into the app catalog of your SharePoint online target environment, target tenant. So let me do that, that just for the sake of completeness. If I will drag and drop the package on my app catalog, as you can see here, and let me zoom in, uh, oops, oops. Okay, as you can see here, we have from a Microsoft Graph point of view, the calendars.read permission in place. So uh, the SharePoint Online, the can infrastructure of SharePoint Framework is telling me in order to uh, properly use this component, you will need to grant the calendars.read permission uh, for Microsoft Graph to this component. I can click on the deploy button and I can go to the admin UI of SharePoint Online and under the advanced section in the API access section, section we can see that we will have in the list of pending permission requests, the permission request for calendars.read. Actually, in my scenario, I already granted the permission previously, so I can simply see that I have in the list of already approved requests, a bunch of permissions for Microsoft Graph, including the calendars.read, as you can see right here. But in case I'm targeting, I was targeting a, a, a fresh new uh, tenant where I don't have the permission already granted, I will be able to simply select uh, the target solution and uh, uh, grant the permission by clicking on the approve button. And that's the flow that an administrator will have to follow in order to actually grant uh, the permission to your uh, solution in order to be able to use it in the target environment. 
Now, so far we've seen that we can read, we can consume data from Microsoft Graph, but actually we can do uh, more. Clearly we can do more. We can, for example, also create new content uh, through the Microsoft Graph in order to feed, uh, for example, uh, or to create new items in the calendar of the currently connected user. So uh, just to show you uh, what I'm talking about, let me switch to another demo that I have right here. In this scenario, we have uh, yet another adaptive card extension that I'm going to use in order to create a calendar event in my current user calendar. The solution is already running, so I can switch back to my browser and I can simply edit this page, remove the previous demo and add the uh, new one. So let me refresh the page to get the new uh, manifest. And here we are create calendar event. As you can see now, I'm also behaving like a real designer. I'm just kidding, of course. But uh, here you can create a new uh, event in the calendar of the currently connected user. So here is my calendar, which is clearly empty right now. But I can come here and I can say, OK, create a new event. I can provide the subject for the event, which can be SIG call demo. Why not? The event will be today at this time. So. I like it. The event will end uh, still today, and let's say it will last one hour or something like that. And then I can create my event uh, in the currently connected user calendar. In a matter of two seconds, you will see the new event popping up in my calendar. We can wait a few more seconds or we can refresh the page. Uh, let me speed up the uh, process. Let me refresh the page just for the sake of uh, simplicity. And here we are. Here we have the SQL demo, which is an online uh, event, so I can even join it and start uh, uh, contributing to this demo, which of course I will not do otherwise. I will stop the current presentation. So how can we do that? Again, back to the uh, code base. And here we have, again, the adaptive card extension as like as before. We have, uh, we still have uh, the calendar service as like as before, but right now in the calendar service, we have the create event method. In the create event method, we uh, accept a subject, a start date and an end date, and we will return back the event object that we created. Here we simply need to create an event object based on the definition of the event type that we have in Microsoft Graph. So as like as before, we have the main properties of our event. And then we simply need to still use the Graph Client object to make an API request for me slash events, but this time it will be a post request providing the actual JSON definition of the event that we want to create. In order to collect uh, the input fields, uh, so the subject and the start and then the date and time of the event, uh, we have uh, a quick view. In the quick view, we still have uh, the capability to provide a data object when we create uh, uh, the, when we render the uh, quick view. But what I'm interested in now is to collect input from the user. And that's why in the definition of my adaptive card, rather than having the text blocks, which will simply render uh, content, I will use the input dot something controls to get, for example, a text input for the subject, a date for the start date, and a time for the start time. And as you can see, every single uh, item that I have in my UI is defined as an input field with a specific ID. So keep an eye on ID equals subject or ID equals start date and start time, and the same applies for end date and end time. Now, if I scroll down, here we can see that in the quick view, we have a set of actions. And specifically, we have an action of type submit, which will display a title of create, which will be with an ID of type submit. And in this section called data, which is an open section in which I can write whatever I like to write, well, I'm simply providing a complex object, like a, a real JSON object, in which the subject, for example, will dynamically get the value of the field, of the input field with ID subject. And the same applies for the start date time and for the end date time. So that at the very end, in my quick view, in the on action method that I implemented through the base type that I'm inheriting from, I can say, OK, if I get an on action invocation for the action with ID submit, which is the button pressed in my quick view, let's get from the action 
the data property, so the one we had here, the one we defined here, and read the subject property, the start date and start time, the end date and that time, so that I can build the input for my create event method of my calendar service, and I can simply create my new calendar item in the currently connected user calendar. So again, I think this is really simple uh, and straightforward. You simply need to build your UI using the adaptive card syntax in the uh, quick view. You collect input, you use the on action, and then you rely on your uh, backend service to do the actual uh, creation of the event in this scenario using the Microsoft Graph. And just to give you an idea, I saw previously in one of the previous demos someone uh, asking a question about how it will render in the UI of a mobile device. Well, if you want to play with the UI device, you can easily go to the Viva Connection dashboard in your tenant. You can switch to the mobile preview and you will be able to see how your adaptive cards will behave and how they will render in the mobile UI of an hypothetical smartphone where you can play with all of the cards. So just for the sake of completeness. That said, I think I'm done with my demo as well. So thank you and back to you, Patrick. Great stuff, Paolo there. Thank you very much for that demo. I think it really shows the power you can bring to these adaptive card extensions that can look uh, deceptively simple, but really you can build a lot of power there. We saw creating an event right on folks' calendars from an adaptive card. So really exciting. Think about all the possibilities you can build in these adaptive cards in this new kind of experience. So definitely encourage folks to check out those adaptive card extensions if you haven't yet.